Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and this is another in the slow stitching on painted fabric. It's not really a series, but this is number two of that, and I'm stamping on cheesecloth this time. This is painted cheesecloth. I have my three, four pieces of fabric. I have a plain fabric and then two, three different painted fabrics, so I'm going to take the cheesecloth and I have a piece, it was raining outside, and I'm a weather wimp, so I just used some plastic greenery for the stamp. It, it would have been easier, uh, I think actually better results if I had gone and gotten a piece of real greenery, but I didn't. And I was going to use this makeup dauber, but it was sort of kind of caved, so I decided to use a regular dauber or dabber. And I'm using paper towel to take off some of the paint, which in the end I found out was not the best, so I decided to not to bypass the paper towel and just go straight from the, I'm using the lid of my Jacquard Lumiere and paint, and I'm going to just, uh, in the end, just use the paint straight instead of taking any off. And I have some parchment paper just lay, happen to be laying on my desk that I'm going to use on top to just push down and give it a little rub. You could use another piece of fabric or a paper towel, anything, just to keep the paint from your hands. And hopefully not to have it smear on the cheesecloth. And that was okay, but I wanted it a little bit darker, and it, it looks different, as you can see on a darker background, it looks a little bit different on my fingers there than on the fabric that I have it set, setting on. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, just do it, do it again without taking the paint off of the, thinning the paint on the dauber off onto paper towel. And this time I'm much happier with the print, the stamp that I got, stamping. And it just really took seconds to dry. Depending on how thick your paint is, you want to let it dry completely. Then I'm going to layer it back up. And I'm just guessing here, but if you had several pieces, you should take a picture before you move anything, if you like your setup, your layout, I should say. And um, I'm really happy with that. And so now I'm going to remove that. I have, um, it's going to be a card front, so I had it on a card. But I have it on white fabric, plain white fabric, and then my three layers of painted. And now I'm going to thread single floss, strand of floss, in my needle. And I've gone up in between those two fabrics and brought it up through the design. And I'm just taking one, I'm doing French knots now, and I'm just taking one twist around. I vary that as I go. And something that I should have known, but realized as I was going, that if you're using a thin strand, a single strand of floss, or maybe even two, and you go through the cheesecloth, come up through the cheesecloth, and do your wrap for your French knot and go back down, you don't probably want to go in the exact same spot. Go back down maybe with one weave of the fabric uh, in between your starting coming up knot or coming up location and back down. That way your knot won't get lost under the cheesecloth, which is what I discovered was happening with my very tiny knots when I went right down through the whole, same hole that I came up, they just sunk down under the cheesecloth. So just keep that in mind. Or use more strands of floss, make bigger knots, that would work as well. So I'm going to just continue on with the French knots. And I don't think you probably need to watch me do all those. It was really enjoyable, but time-consuming. 
I prefer to do French knots in a hoop because it's easier on my hands. But this was, this was really fun and I liked the results. So I just went ahead up the stem, wherever I wanted to put them. The next I'm going to change floss to a different color and I'm gonna come up between the fat back fabric and the painted fabric again. And I'm going to make sort of echo this circle that's a little bit under the cheesecloth and that is Neo Color 2 Wax Pastels. That's how I originally made that. And I'm going to just do a running stitch but it's curved so I won't put a bunch of stitches on my needle, at least not to start with a small curve. And I'm taking a first stitch. This is a little hard to see. It'll get, a, it'll get easier toward the end. I'm going to take the first stitch over the edge of the fray, so maybe it will hold it in a little bit, but I'm, I'm really not con too concerned about it. So I'm doing sort of a rocking. I'm not really doing a stab and a bring back up. I'm sort of rocking it, but I'm only loading one stitch at this point on my needle because it's a curved, like I said, because it's a curved stitch. And I'm just going to do three, I think I just do three lines here. Sorry, I'm spinning it around. It's the only way I can do it when I'm filming it. And there may be some places in this video, sorry to say that, that I go off screen a little bit, but I come back on pretty quickly. I'm not going to talk about every little thing here. I'll, I'll t mention the stitches that I will be doing. And if you have any questions, if I don't cover something, please ask in the comments. I'll try to answer them. And even though I'm enjoying this, if it's painfully slow for you, feel free to speed it up a little bit. I do speed up and, and edit out, of course, some of the stitching. And even though these are painted fabrics and there's layers, it's not that hard. In this case, sometimes it can be if the paint's really heavy on the fabric. It wasn't that hard to stitch on this. I really enjoyed it. And I'm just taking that down over that weave of the cheesecloth. And I changed floss again. And now I'm on the actual uh, Neo Color Tube circle there, or next to it. And I'm going to do, it's just sort of a a spread out satin stitch and I've moved my frays down out of the way and I'm going to vary the length. That corner was not tacked down and I did end up tacking it down because it just my thread kept getting caught on the back fabric when it separated from the fabric that was painted fabric that was on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that and a little tack in there, just a little base to keep it together so it doesn't get all caught up on my floss. 
So I'm not really thinking about how I'm going to fill this in at this point. I'm just going around, varying the lengths of the stitches onto the circle there. And when I get to, I'm not going all the way around the circle because the part that's under the fray, I decided to not worry about that part and, or think about that part. So I'm just going to go back and put some other lengths of stitches in. Look kind of like sun rays. And I'll just continue on all the way around in the same way. This is something to think of is whether you want the stitches to show more and you might use a more contrasting thread. Or if you're good with them sort of blending in, which is what I was doing here. It adds texture and you can see them. It's always a little easier in real life, of course. Then I'm going to put my frays back up, and if a cross piece of thread comes out, which it may, a left or right piece, I sort of don't worry about that at this point. Now, on this fabric, there, there were sort of some X's, so I decided that that was what I would do. And I started the same way, with my knot in between the back fabric and the fabric on top. And I just made little X's. They are close to the same fabric color, so it's a little hard to see them. But I really liked putting it on this uh, fabric, so it's, it's stitching them on this fabric. And I'm just doing them random. And I'm also not thinking about which way my crosses, excuse me, my X's are going as far as right, left, left, right, which means that the thread that's on top may be going one direction on one of the X's and another direction on another one. Because they're just random and it doesn't really matter. They're not exactly the same size, but they're adding a nice texture on top of that fabric. And I'll, and I'll add some more in other places around there.
Now I have another floss starting the same way and I'm this is pretty close to the color that I stamped on the cheesecloth and I'm just doing it's chain stitch only I'm not chaining them I'm just gonna make a little kind of a flower or echoing the leaf idea sort of whatever you want to call it it was just to get that little color in that corner and to hold the, that corner down on the cheesecloth So I'm just doing three little petals and then a couple dropped ones so that they're just as if they were falling off of this main piece. Now there were some shapes in this design of painted fabric that had like leaves and just some other little shapes and I decided to just do a running stitch around the sort of around the outside. So I just move around the piece and find the other areas like that and give them a little outline running stitch. I did decide to do something I don't know, I guess satin stitch, but not quite. Next to this leaf, there were leaf shape, there were a couple little, little uh, bits of green. They weren't quite leaves and they were tiny. So I decided to make like a little, maybe an insect or a little flying, just with three little stitches. I just like the idea of that next to the leaf. So I took a long stitch in the center on this one and then just put two little bits on the sides, kind of like wings. Now I've changed my floss again and come up. And I'm going to go around this. This is also a neo color to circle and you can in my painted fabric playlist I believe that that uh, the way I did these fabrics is in there so I'm doing it looks like a fly stitch right there sort of but I'm doing um, it's really blanket stitch the only thing is I'm making the top space narrower than the bottom and so this will cause it to curve and sort of eyelash. And I really like the way that looked. It had some dimension and that was a very enjoyable stitch to do on this. And you'll see that I do it in more places. On the same part of that design. And you can also see that I did the... Uh, 
satin around the cir- the orangish circles of neo color. I did the same satin type stitch that I did on that first one. And I'm going to end up, I thought it was done, but I'm going to end up moving the fray out of the way a little bit and go under that. And you want to remember to catch that loop before you pull it down, which I missed doing on this little last bit. I had to hold it closer to my face, which happens on here a couple times at least. Now I have this area that I really like and I think seed stitch would be the best thing. I've changed my color again. And I'm going to just random seed stitch in there. And if I had it closer to my face, they would be better. But it's, it's just fine. No worrying about this. So I'll fill in that area. Just up and down, little stitches. I'm not even too concerned that they're the same size. Just want to put some texture in that pretty painted area. fabric turns a little orange on the bottom I decided not to take it into that color now I'm back on that piece of fabric that had the X's I've changed my color of the floss and oops, I'm going to do little T's or plus signs Just to hold that fabric down and add more texture. I'm sorry I'm off the screen. I'll get back up there if we go. And I'll just do some more of those all over the place. Now I'm going to do a running stitch with a different color and I I think this is two, two strands of floss. Again, apologies for spinning it all around. I hope I'm not making y'all dizzy.
Ideally, if your fabric's not too thick, you could put more stitches on, which I'm doing now. And not worry about the stitch length. Once there's a gazillion stitches in here, it's not that noticeable or it shouldn't bother me. It's supposed to be fun, right? And it has been. So I'm just going to fill in with this same stitch. So I finished doing the running stitch here and I decided to add some more X's and putting them together makes kind of a mesh looking. I really like the way that turned out. And then more running stitches sort of echoing the curve of the edge of the cheesecloth. And some seed stitches a little bit bigger, a little more spread out. And then more X's down here. So I'm really pleased with this piece. I think it'll make a really nice card. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll give it a try. It's a fun project and slow stitching is always relaxing in my opinion. And if you haven't tried the painted fabric, that's really fun. And this is just another way to use that fabric. If you did like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and tap the bell so you get notifications for my most recent videos. And I appreciate you being here. This has been Anne. Thanks a lot for watching.